This is end of 2021 season recap for the Baltimore Orioles out of the park 21 rebuild. Um, as you can see here, the O's won 68 games, much better than last season. Um, ended the season pretty rough. August and September weren't great. Um, and here's the final standings. The Yankees won the East. Indians won the Central. Angels um, <clears throat> won the West. The Astros and the Rays grabbed the wild cards. Mets, Cardinals, and Dodgers were division winners in the NL with the Nats and the Padres winning the wild card. Um, the Braves finished just a game out. Diamondbacks were three game out. White Sox were in it. Um, nobody else really close to the wild card. Um, the worst team in the league was the Texas Rangers with, with 56 wins. Another thing that's interesting here about the Orioles is their run differential. Last year I was like minus, I think, almost 400. Only minus 78 this year and really... Um, but my run differential should have won like five more games, 73 wins. Um, so that's how the standings turned out. And then the playoffs, oh, that is not the right tab. There we go. The playoffs, uh, the LA Dodgers took down the Indians in the world series. So Padres advanced, um, to the NLCS, um, and lost to the Dodgers. And on this side, uh, the Yankees and the Indians, um, so yeah, the Dodgers, a year after Betts and Turner leave, um, they finally got their World Series. Um, so now a little bit more specifics about the O's here. Um, as you can see, things went downhill. So it's 500, started terribly, then was, you know, four games over 500 between May, June, and July. And then August was bad, September was bad. Um, you know, it was... Uh, the overall record is about where I would expect it to be, though. So, um, runs scored, I was 12th. Runs allowed, I was 8th. Um, big improvements there. The fielding was okay. I'd like that to get better. Um, so, that's the team. And then if we go to the hitting stats, this is going to have um, some guys mixed in who weren't actually on the team or who barely were because every player who is on my 40-man is on this roster right now. It's just kind of what I do in the offseason just to get a feel for – um, where they all fit in the grand scheme of things, according to my manager. Um, so Mountcastle um, led the team with a – actually, why don't we start by war? Hold on, hold on. Um, led the team in war and runs created plus 126. Um, Austin Hayes, good season. He hit 41 home runs, which is actually top 10 all-time in Orioles single-season franchise history. Um, Correa ended up with a 101 rate – Run created plus and a 2.6 war. Um, but with the O's, here it is, and he played 69 nice games, um, only 0.4 war and an 85 runs created plus. Uh, so he was not, he was well below uh, league average after coming over. That's a bit of a bummer. Um, Ryan McKenna showed, um, showed himself well. Um, 238 played appearances, one win. Um, Toro, not the best season from him. We'll see what happens. Um, he's going to be pushed by some prospects next year. We'll see what he can do. Uh, Yusnel Diaz, after being, you know, the point where I was <laughs> ready to give up on him forever, came back and, uh, ended up with a 100 runs created plus, which is exactly league average. And in 76 games, um, 0.9 war, um, you know, so maybe, maybe he's not totally, uh, dead. Um, Ryland Bannon, a bit of a pretty, I mean, for a guy who was, the top 60 prospect and ripped it up in double A or triple A last year. Pretty disappointing year from him. 0.1 war, 85 runs created plus. He's only 25. Hopefully he can get a bit better, but um, that's a little disappointing. Adley Rutschman, here he is. So he got 41 starts, 165 plate appearances. He put up 0.7 war. So, you know, you can probably multiply that by three to get a full season's worth of games for him. He's not going to play 162, obviously. Um, and that would be just over two war in, you know, 120-some games. Runs created plus 97, um, so about league average. Um, hopefully he'll come along a bit better, though. And then, you know, nobody else too important. Hung Joe Park was – Hai Jun Park was the Rule 5 guy. Um, weak with the bat, but he does get on base some. Um, his on base percentage was – his walk percentage, all right, but 1.2 war because he's good with the glove. So it's the hitters. The pitchers, um, let's go war here too. So Luke Weaver leading the way by a long shot, um, but not all that's with the O's. With the O's, 14 starts, uh, 0.7 war, eh, 5.07 FIP. So he wasn't great with us either. Um, 
Corey Abbott was pretty good. He got 19 starts, 109 innings, and he put up a win above replacement. He came over for Chance Cisco. Um, so we'll see what he can do. He looks like he could be okay. Um, JD Hammers, the closer, did okay. Uh, Bailey Falter, he was one guy who really struggled down the stretch, but he's still um, 3.86 ERA, 3.65 FIP, led the team in FIP. He came over from the Phillies, I think, for Renato Nunez. Luis Castillo is very up and down. Um, as you can see here, seven innings, yeah, zero runs, one run, one run, five runs, five runs. That's like basically how he was for me. It's pretty frustrating. 28 starts, only 0.6 war. Um, got a good amount of strikeouts. His walks were down. His home runs are just high, though. Um, so, yeah, 5.51 FIP is not going to cut it, Luis. Um, so, and then just a bunch of guys. Now, Michael Bauman's not on here. Neither is John Means because they're both on the – DL, they can remain on there until free agency opens. Um, but some other guys, you know, nobody, they didn't pitch a ton, right? So Junior Fernandez, these are just guys, a bunch of guys who are either already in the O system or guys that I brought over in trades. Junior Fernandez had a nice ERA and fit. Um, uh, let's see, who else here? Colton Eastman looks like he might be an all right guy based on what he does. Armenteros was one of the main pieces that came over from Mancini. He got blasted, and then he was not good in AAA either after I demoted him. Zach Pop, hopefully we'll see more from. Um, so, yeah, and then who was striking people out? So, Justice Sheffield, I don't expect a lot from him. I claimed him on waivers. Barely pitched. Struck out a lot of guys. Oscar De La Cruz, 12.8 strikeouts per nine. His ERA is 5.6, 4.87 fit. He might be a guy. Um, you know, Zimmerman, Falter, Eastman, um, Let's see, Justin Steele. All these are going to be guys who are going to battle for maybe like the long man spot um, or maybe like that fifth starter spot. Um, I think D.L. Hall will definitely be up next year and probably be my number three starter. And then, you know, all these guys will battle it out um, for the other the other spots. Um, they also, the, um, the prospect reports get updated. Um, the farm system is seventh right now. I think it was sixth. Um, it was rated halfway through the year. Look how many top 100 guys I have, though. Like, I don't know how many that is, but it's a lot. It's like 11 or 12 guys. So Asa Lacey did, he was my number one pick last year. He did come back from that torn rotator cuff. He made four starts. He wasn't very good. 4.81 fit. ERA, two runs higher. So he had some bad luck. Yeah, 431 Babbitt. That's crazy. Um, so, so far, nothing too alarming from his shoulder injury. Obviously, you know, when guys come back, this isn't that rare for them to get blasted at first to shake off the rust in this game that seems to be kind of baked in. Um, one alarming thing is his stamina when he came back dropped from 55 to 45. Um, that's borderline starter. Uh, you know, if you, if you go below 40, you're not going to be a starter, um, basically. And 45 is not like, oh, this guy can go out and throw – and, you know, 100 pitches every time, 110 pitches and be fine. You know, hopefully that's just a temporary thing and it'll go back up. Um, Trevor Larnach was great in AAA, 47th overall prospect. Put up eh, only 1.9 wins. Never mind. Okay, 113 runs created plus. So he definitely, he cooled off towards the end because I checked him about a month before the end of the season. He was um, doing better than that. Um, but he's probably going to be starting right field next year. Brian Weissert is the guy. He came over uh, with Carlos Correa as kind of a throw-in. My scout was kind of like, hey, this guy might be better um, than people were thinking. And he pitched well in A-ball, and all of a sudden he's my top pitching prospect, number 54. Um, Bannon is 55th. All these guys who were up this year will fall off after they have 75 days of major league service. So, like, at the beginning of the next year. So, Bannon won't be here. Rutschman's still 58th. Nick Matan is a dude, man. This guy, I think, could be really good. My manager, Hyde, likes him actually at third base more than Toro. Um, so he could start at third next year. He put up 3.2 wins above replacement and a 124 runs created plus. He came over um, as part of the Tanner Scott trade um, with the Phillies. And so did my current closer, J.D. Hammer. So that was a good trade, it's looking like. Um, D.L. Hall had a nice year. Um, he put up 1.7 wins and 28 starts. Um, you know, he wasn't dominant, but he was good. I think he'll definitely be up next year and competing for a rotation spot. Austin Hayes. Jamie Chisholm was the number one pick. Um, and he, 51 games, he put up a 104 runs created plus. As an 18, turned 19 year old in rookie ball, I'll take that first, first professional experience. Um, let's see, anybody else? Drew Bowser was another round pick. He did okay. Gunnar Henderson had a pretty good year in A ball as a 19 and 20 year old. 
Um, Adam Hall had a great bounce back year. He'll be in AAA next year and possibly competing. Um, Diplon, Diplan will be um, competing for a spot next year. A bunch of these guys will be. So that's kind of where the farm system's at. Seventh overall, um, a bunch of guys that are close um, to getting up. Uh, one guy that's not on here, you'll notice in my top 20 prospects, is Mr. Grayson Rodriguez, who, of course, had those two... Uh, Shoulder injuries last year, and his numbers are just not the same. But he actually put together a decent year. Like, not lights out um, like he was before the shoulder injuries. But he threw 127 innings. He put up almost two wins. His ERA was 2.96 with a 4.4 FIP. So he's maybe getting a little lucky because he was walking four guys per nine, but not giving up many home runs or hits. Still striking out almost 10 guys per inning. Um, so it looks like he might not be totally useless. He might still develop it into an okay arm. Um, my scout likes him more than OSA, but we'll see. We'll see what happens with him. Um, hopefully, yeah, hopefully he'll continue to come together. Um, so that's kind of like the end of season recap. A couple interesting things. Let me, uh, let me see if I can just get to come up by searching Vlad. Yeah, so Vlad Guerrero Jr. signed a big extension, uh, entering his first arbitration year at the Blue Jays. Eight years, $156 million. Here it is. Um, but he's got an opt out after year three. I would bet he will opt out because he's a monster. He's so good in this game. Um, another big extension. Um, the Yankees signed Gleyber Torres to a big extension with no opt out. This was eight years, $183 million. Um, so he's locked up until his early 30s. Um, and there were some other extensions. Jeff McNeil signed a long-term one with the Mets. So did um, Joey Gallo signed an extension with the Rangers. So... Yeah, that's that. And then if you go to the off-season center, um, or actually the salary arbitration, I don't have a lot going on. John Means, Pat Valeka, I'm honestly not sure if either of them are going to be back. Means was terrible. He hurt his arm, etc. Not a lot going on for arbitration or free agents for me. Um, and then here are the top free agents. Zach Greinke, Charlie Morton, Javi Baez. Greinke actually had a great year at age 38. Andrew Haney, Kyle Schwarber. Um, so yeah, so some, some okay guys out there. Max Scherzer kind of towards the end of his career. Um, Inse Arte is a guy I'm going to check in on cause he's been really good for the Padres the last two years and I need a center fielder and that'll kind of be, um, the main thing I'll be looking for is a really good fielding center fielder or, you know, at least above average, um, backup catcher and some bullpen arms too. Those would be the main things I'll be attacking here. Um, and one thing I meant to do at the beginning, but I forgot, is just a quick look at some of the awards. Um, let's look at the main ones. So NL Rookie of the Year went to Dylan Carlson, outfielder for the um, cards. And um, Jared Kelnick got Rookie of the Year. He got all the first place votes to the Mariners, but you can see Mount Castle and Hayes both finished in the top five. So that's cool. Um, and then let's see, Cy Young went to o Shohei Otani, who was just obscenely good on both sides of the ball. 33 starts, 5.6 wins above replacement. Uh, I mean, 6.7 hits per nine is crazy. Striking out 11 guys per, per nine. And then on top of that, in 94 games, 442 play appearances, he put up another five war. So he put up almost 11 wins above replacement. 170 runs created plus. That is just a crazy good year. Um, NL Cy Young, Jack Flaherty won it. Cindergarden got some first place votes. Bueller got one too. Um, Jacob Nix had a nice year for the Padres. Wow. Um, and then MVP, Otani did get it. He got 28 of the first place votes, two for Stanton. As you can see here, no big surprises with names. These are all guys who, you know, very easily in real life MLB 2021, other than maybe Mike Ford, I don't know what's up with that. Um, Joe Adele had a great year for the Angels. He was a big part of why they won um, the uh, the division. And then on the NL side, uh, Alonzo beat Acuna Jr. by a vote. Um, and then Justin Turner had a great year in his first year for the Nats. Fernando Tatis was unbelievable, but missed like 20 or 30 games due to injury. Um, and some other guys you'd kind of expect um, to be on here. Um, so yeah, so I will be back with probably an end of off season update where again, I'm going to, I'm going to try to, um, boost center field, backup catcher, um, couple bullpen arms. I'm going to look at managers too. I don't think I'm going to fire Hyde, um, cause there's really not a no brainer guy out there, but I'm just not sure Hyde is my guy. Um, I think I could get a better coach. 
Um, I am planning to sign a new bench coach that maybe could be like a Hyde replacement um, if, if I get off to a slow start. So that's the um, end of season 2021 recap. Um, the O's finished 68 and 94. Um, and we're looking to compete next year, man. That, that's, that's the name of the game next year. Looking to compete um, with more guys up and Mount Castle Hayes, all those guys, um, all those guys, that, you know, a year further along. And this was the one thing I mentioned earlier, just real quick at the end here. Real cool thing. They have batter leaders and these update, like these career leaders in single season. Um, and, the you know, and your guys like jump on here. Like, you know, if Austin Hayes plays like a decade, like he'll, he'll climb this leaderboard and hits, et cetera. Um, so home runs, single season home runs. There's Austin Hayes is 2021. He was, he's eighth with 41 home runs. He had like 23 by the end of May. I, he was, he was on pace to break Davis's record. Um, so yeah, 41 home runs. We'll take it. Um, and that's, uh, you know, that's the end of the update.